Hey there. Dark Souls 3 is just about to come out, and some of you probably haven't uh, placed your orders uh, for either the game or the strategy guide. I would encourage you, uh, if you are among those people, to consider going to duckfeed.tv slash tipjar and uh, using our Amazon link there. Either if you're going to buy physical copies or if you're going to buy some PlayStation Network bucks to, uh, to download your copy or whatever, everything you buy through that link uh, does help us. We get a cut, and it goes a long way towards uh, keeping the lights on here. Uh, so yeah, that is duckfeed.tv slash tipjar for all of your buying stuff needs. Some of our landings were desperate adventures. We are now prepared to meet the inevitable counterattacks with power and with confidence. My name is Gary Butterfield. My name is Cole Ross. And you're listening to Bonfireside Chat. It is a favorite. It is a deformable favorite. Abyssal. abyssal. Yeah. It is a deformable favorite. It is a hot demon lady favorite. Yeah. Rurufa. Rurufa. Yeah. But uh, that's weird. Uh, yeah, <laughs> as you have probably been able to uh, to derive from our conversation here, we, we are... have a waifu now. Yes, uh, no, she's we're... a demon lady from Abyss. <laughs> she's a demon. Uh, no. Yeah, we're talking about Shadow Tower Abyss, which is a first person action RPG developed and published by From Software for the PS2 in Japan in 2003. Yes, um, and this is uh, as you may remember from a couple of weeks ago when we covered regular Shadow Tower. This is a sequel to that that takes place way after it. Yes. So something kind of close to modern times or like World War Two, like yeah. it's, you know semi modern, but there's some like a lot of like old timey flak jackets and stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, it is. It is the the most contemporaneous game that From has ever done in the RPG in the, stuff, like yeah, Metal, the R- Metal, yeah, Metal yeah. Wolf Chaos and stuff. Yeah. Oh sure, which is which is ripped from the headlines. <laughs> um, but th- this is uh, it's definitely as far as uh, the the Souls DNA thing. This is the closest to now. Yes, you, um, you are dealing with semi-automatic pistols and stuff, but we're giving it away. Uh, yes, it's yeah, it's it's weird. So we'll, we'll get to it. It's cool. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> so uh, uh, this is on the PS2, and it plays very similarly to uh, Kingsfield Four, which we cover, which we covered a couple of years ago. Um, which means that it is more fluid and friendly than the original Shadow Tower, uh, while still being very deliberately paced. Yes. Yeah. Um, so. This one comes out of the box with DualShock controls, um, whereas we had to do some kind of PSP Vita alchemy in order to make that work on the uh, on Shadow Tower. This one automatically starts as kind of a dual stick, but there's also different control options. So uh, the dual stick is probably the easiest one to do, and then there is a weird kind of proto... Um, I don't know, isn't that how you control the sword at the end of Metal Gear 2 as well? <laughs> you do a little bit, yeah. Yeah, like there's this weird kind of uh, a version of controlling the your weapons with the analog stick that mm-hmm. I don't necessarily recommend. Yeah, um, but you could do it if you want to. Yeah, so it's like um, a it's like a proof of concept for uh, for a system we're going to get to in a minute. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and for kind of those reasons, this is much more approachable than Shadow Tower uh, in every way except acquiring it and getting it to run. Yes, because <laughs> this this never came out of the United States. Uh, so you have to run this on emulator. Luckily, there is a patched kind of ISO that's translated. And more than like, not more than Shadow Tower necessarily, but you could play this game in, in Japanese and probably be okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you're not missing very much. Like this, I was expecting this to have, this doesn't even really feel like it has Kingsfield four levels of, of story right to it. Like there's, there's, this is even more lore scant mm-hmm. than that. Not to mention, you know, Shadow Tower one, like it is, it is about on par with Shadow Tower one as far as knowing what's going on. Yeah. So you're not going to uh, be like led astray or not be able to find a place like everything that you're doing uh, is, uh, is, is pretty apparent. Honestly. Yeah. It's really straightforward. Like this is a very straightforward game, mm-hmm. and uh, kind of surprisingly so. Yeah, I was uh, yeah. I was definitely taken aback. Like we're talking, even in terms of length, my play clock was at about twelve hours. 
yeah. when I got done, which uh, that 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 doesn't account for all the deaths and stuff like that. Like, but probably take everything else into account, like a 15, 16 hour game. Yeah, we, we could have done this in one episode and didn't know that right. at the time because there's a this will be like one of like three things about this game on the Internet after it's out. because <laughs> Nobody. And that's not quite true, but uh, the game does not have a lot of attention or love given to it. Right. Um, there, there's a you know kind of a minor fan out roar when it was not translated. There's some drama there, mm-hmm. uh, but there's not uh, you know people have not taken it upon themselves to make exhaustive guides and and uh, and and such yeah. to this, which is kind of a bummer because it does have that suggestion of secrets. And there are a couple of things where you know I did something. I'm not sure if the way it ha- you know panned out was the only way it could pan out. Mm-hmm. Um, I would love to have looked at a guide or something, but I cannot find such a thing. Yeah, something to kind of corroborate that without having to go back and do our own due diligence of yes. replaying this game over and over again. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is. A, so one of the ways it's more approachable is that you're not in just kind of hallways. Right. Um, it uses the PS2's added ability to to mess with geometry. There's more verticality to the spaces. Um, there are lots of inclines and the like. And uh, this adds a lot to the game, uh, not least of which makes navigation easier because... There are more landmarks and kind of more <laughs> more unique uh, room layouts to hang your head on. Yeah, it feels like a more kind of bespoke <laughs> kind of uh, kind of feel to it. Yeah. So there are systems here. Like this is still a Shadow Tower game. A lot of those systems have stuck around. For example, we have something like equipment durability uh, that is still here. But uh, Gary, tell me if this feels the same for you. The loop feels much looser. This it's time. not a it's not a survival horror game. No. Like it's not, it, it's easy. Mm-hmm. Like out of the games that are in the the kind of Souls DNA, if we consider Shadow Tower and Kingsfield to be part of that, this is the easiest, right? I think, um, and it's kind of a bummer. Mm-hmm. I think um, I wish that they had tightened that a little bit because there are so many ways that this game is a, a huge improvement. But this one, like I ended up with so much stuff. I and like <laughs> you get to that point in Shadow Tower where you you feel powerful, but it only has meaning because you were so unpowerful in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, here, kind of right out the gate, you start out pretty good. And then just get like, like my main concern, my number one gameplay concern in this game was making sure I didn't have too much stuff so I didn't have to walk slow. <laughs> yep. Like I was, I was overburdened with like bejeweled sets of armor and like uh, uh, crystal encrusted swords and <laughs> they were too heavy for me and there's no way to drop things. So my w- number one like driving purpose is to make sure I can go to a shop and sell stuff. Yep. Like that's the hardest part of this game. <laughs> Yep, like that's the resource that you're managing. Like, how many goblets are you burdened with? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, there's so many DMs that I can carry, and and just one too many makes me move, and doesn't even hurt you like it does in the old one. I mean, it does eventually, actually. Yeah, um, yeah. which I only found out because I was so, you know, (laughs) overburdened with treasure. Yeah, and the treasure doesn't do like the souls thing where it's telling a story too. Mm -hmm. So it's just so weird that they just like dumped. It reminds me of like um. Uh, an early, like an, an inexperienced dungeon master mm-hmm. who is just kind of like, like, hey man, these are all cool magical items. I want to put all of these in my campaign. Mm-hmm. And then just gives the player everything. You know, and it's like, yes, it might be kind of fun to get this stuff once in a while, but it doesn't, it's it's kind of shallow. Like the game is kind of dessert-like <laughs> in that respect. And it's a weird thing to say for a game, you know, a series that has this reputation for being obtuse and hard, but is I don't think this is very hard, and it does feel like you're just spoiled for choice at any given opportunity for the stuff to wear. Yeah. So what that what that means is, you know, you have so much to kind of chew through, you never get to your last set of armor or your last weapon because there's almost always another one. Like the the, the tub doesn't have a drain. It's, well, there's <laughs> that too. So you're not. Um, but also, it has the kind of uh, like Borderlands or Diablo problem of constantly finding equipment that's worse than what you're wearing. Mm-hmm. So there's just a lot of time spent like comparing stats, yeah, in a menu, um, and it it's it, it that's kind of a bummer, yeah. You now, and there, uh, there there are descriptions like they they whoever translated this, and I I tried really hard to find their name or their handle, but uh, I, I, that that information was not uh, available for me. Um, but uh, whoever translated it did the uh, the 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 item des- descriptions and stuff, but it is all just like this is a gold crown. Okay. He, it's almost like he wrote them himself. Yeah. Like just by looking at the picture, mm-hmm. you know, because it, it does that. And like there is a lot of complication as far as snap bonuses, but that stuff gets down to a level of fiddliness that like feels like a more modern game kind of thing to me yeah, that I, yeah. I never really like. Like, oh, plus plus three lightning per- percent lightning resist. <laughs> Ooh, hoodalali, what a I'll, day. I'll remember to equip this when I see a lightning man. 
Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't want to go on the menu. I'll just take the extra 20 damage. You know, I, <laughs> I just, the, uh, so it, nothing is that significant. So it's this real, like, uh, modern Bioware approach to, to equipment upgrade kind of stuff. And it kind of like that, that part I don't like, like right. I, I came away from really liking this game. It sounds like I'm really down on it. This is the worst thing about it. Yeah. I think is just this, uh, equipment and reward feels meaningless because it's constant. Mm hmm. Um, they, I mean, there are whole zones in this game where, like, I had to make, like, multiple treasure runs just to grab stuff. But there's nothing I'm saving for. Right. You know, there's there's nothing, like, there's no real economy to it because everything is free. It's like a post-scarcity world. <laughs> the world of Shadow Tower Abyss is a utopia. <laughs> well, no, so, so eventually you stop getting stuff that you can buy with Kunes. Yeah. Though. Yeah, so yeah, like you run too. out you run out of healing, you know, healing potions and stuff. So by the time I exhausted all the different versions of the shop, like I was just passing gear up. I was like, I really like what I have. Maybe I'll see what I pick up next round. I <laughs> or would, I'll just I would, remember I, where this was at. I kept wanting the thing to be something. Mm -hmm. You know, like a like this is a cool looking sword. Mm -hmm. You know, like I want to pick up that sword and see what's going on with it. And then I just was disappointed kind of time and time again with they're just it being worse than my current sword or just different in like a way like it feels haphazard. You end up getting stuff that uh like gives you resistance to poison well after you're gonna run into monsters that poison you. Mm -hmm. You know, things like that. So like you can be in like near the end of the game, well past the the blight town, because there's a blight town in this game, um, well past the blight town. And, you know, I found so much, like, poison nullifying equipment, yeah. but nobody would poison me. Like, I was just walking around like, hey, brother, poison me. Can, can, <laughs> I, can I get a toxin can here? I, can, I, can I get a spot of poison? <laughs> yeah, can, can yeah. you hook me up so I can test out this rad armor? And nothing, like, it just didn't happen. Like, it, it really feels randomized, but it's not. Yeah. Like, it's all placed there, but it's, it, and to be, like, the company that is the best at placing items. Mm -hmm to do it this poorly is just really surprising to me yeah so comparing yeah. it directly to dark souls or demons souls even doesn't feel doesn't feel entirely fair but look at what they did with king's field four where they did have that scarcity or they did have kind of that restraint around it or what and they it, did with shadow tower yes like shadow tower it's not the, the it's not like oh i found this armor here and it's telling me a story but there was a basic curve where you found more no. powerful stuff the further you went into the dungeon mm -hmm. You know, so it's it's not even like I don't feel like I'm being unfair comparing it to Demon Souls because I don't even have to compare it to Demon Souls for it to kind of come up wanting yeah. in that respect. Um, again, though, like I really like this game. It's just this one thing that is a bummer. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a big bummer. Yeah. Um, so they kind of trade that uh, <laughs> that system of privation for a, a little bit more complexity in the attacks you can do. So you have, um, you know, the ability to determine which way you swipe your weapon. Um, and in the default control scheme, uh, what happens is, uh, it's on your right analog stick. So it's almost like a, like, like a, was it breakout breakdown or uh, mm. chronicles of Riddick or something like that, where you're using the right stick to, you know, determine which way you're going to attack. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, I would, <laughs> I would recommend putting that right stick on looking up and down because this is a very vertical game. But, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, that definitely does feel like a proof of concept for just like what they could possibly do if they had a three stick controller. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or like what happens with, um, uh, you know, like twilight princess or whatever, when you're directing the sword, mm -hmm. you know, moving it directly. Um, so it's kind of a little bit like that. Um, uh, mapping on the shoulder button still feels good yeah. though. And I would say that this is kind of, as far as a combat system adds a lot. Yes. Um, you know, because uh, these different strikes, um, which are, they're not purely cosmetic. Um, they introduce these kind of different kinds of damage. So like you can have a ax and uh, you can do slashing damage, but you can also thrust the butt of the ax forward mm -hmm. um, and do blunt damage. You also dismember enemies. So you can, by like choosing like where to strike in what direction, like, hey, this, this enemy has a plant stock that shoots lasers. I'm going to cut it off by using a horizontal strike. <laughs> and that's a that's a vertical or like a, a viable tax, tactical option that you can make yeah. in this game. And that's rad. Like that that's about <laughs> as good as the like first person, you know, uh, uh, souls likes have gotten like the, the, you know, I think that that's stronger than it is in Kingsfield. Definitely, like, that was very fun and very satisfying to me. Yeah, it made it made each uh, made each encounter when that was still in play because eventually it kind of goes away. But it made each encounter where that was in play like feel kind of just more moment to moment satisfying because mm -hmm. you did have like these these micro goals. Like I was, I found myself planning what to do with my next 
with my next blow in a way that I wouldn't if it was just if it was just like one of these first person RPGs and it was like, well, I'm just going to hope it hits or hope I have enough stamina. Yeah. And then just try to stay at his backside or what have you, which is which I can I can get into that. Like I I have fun with the fighting in all the games previous to this one. Mm -hmm. This one is more fun, though. Um, And then the first time that you cut off something's head and it still gets back up (laughs) is a really amazing moment because it doesn't uh, dismembering these things doesn't kill them or correspond with damage necessarily, Mm -hmm. you know, or or hit points. It uh, so you can like cripple them and cut off their legs so they can't pursue you very fast. But eventually that will grow back or they'll just kind of hobble after you. (laughs) And it changes their uh, changes their moveset, too. Yeah. Yeah. Which is just it's really great. Like there and it's you have to do it. Like there are a couple of big ogre monsters that have a spear and like you want to cut off that spear arm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, that's going to make that monster much easier to fight. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that's, that's super cool. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you can, you can, you can, uh, shoot off that spear arm or take off that spear arm from a distance because while you have spells and that kind of falls under the same abundance, I had more, more spell rings than I knew what to do with. You also have access, uh, to guns. You start with a, uh, a semi-automatic, uh, pistol and it kind of only goes up from there. And, and the first gun you start with is very powerful. Yes. Like, you don't start with a weak gun, and you can dismember things with the gun. It's not like piercing damage doesn't uh, doesn't cut things off. So, like, you can, in this, this you know, pre-Dark Souls from software game, you can find a sniping position and snipe off the heads of things. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Um, Granted. And including later Granted. when you get a sniper rifle. <laughs> yep. Uh, does, I, I never got the sniper rifle. Does the sniper rifle have a, uh, have a crosshair? Uh, I, I don't know. I also didn't get it. Okay. I just know that it's for for sale. Um, <laughs> you don't get a crosshair, which is kind of cool. Like you, no. the way you adjust your your aiming is the same way you do, um, like in real life archery or whatever, which is just tracking. Yeah. You know, you saw where you shot, and then you you adjust. Yeah. Based on that. Yep. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. You get a lot of ammo, and that's what I ended up spending most of my money on. Um, we already mentioned the, uh, the, the, the carry capacity, like the carry weight limit, uh, which was not a thing in, uh, shadow tower, the original. So you have to be really mindful of what you carry with you because um, like, go ahead. It, it's totally a thing in shadow tower. That's well, you, when you, you, when you, you had your equip, your, your equip oh, capacity equip rather than carry yeah. weight. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So here it's the opposite. So there's no, there's no equip capacity in this mm-hmm. one. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I see what you're going, going yeah. for. Yep. So you have to you have to take take that into account. Um, also, the stamina system changed in this. Um, I like this better because it, it, it's a little bit more similar to uh, to the later game. So whereas in Shadow Tower and then in the Kingsfield games before this, uh, you had this meter that would charge up that would kind of determine how much damage you would do. You actually now. Um, you have a number of like stamina gems that determines how many swipes you can take. Um, and it has no effect on the amount of power that you're able to put behind it. So it's all or nothing. Yeah. It's, it's discreet, you know? So as opposed to like looking at a bar of a hundred and thinking like, Oh my, you know, every swipe of this does 27%. How many can I get away with? How many do I have to wait? How long do I have to wait to, to get to recharge to a full strike? Mm-hmm. Um, so the, yeah, I would agree. This is better. Um, leveling up is the same. They're very similar to, to Shadow Tower. Um, you do it by killing enemies. Um, soul pods are still a thing, but soul pods are rarer. Um, and a weird kind of choice for a game that is this empowering. Um, <laughs> and as far as I can tell, it is the same way as Shadow Tower. It's based on the enemy rather than the attack or your action. Right. Um, so I'm not 100% sure of that. I didn't see as dramatic a results. Uh, but I never had to grind because it's not a hard game. Uh, whereas that's where I saw the, you know... The result is going back and clearing out old areas, but there's no reason to ever go backwards in this game. Right. Um, yeah. Um, so we mentioned the cunes before those come back, whereas in the original Shadow Tower, they were kind of an afterthought. They were just give me a health coupon, please. Um, <laughs> or give me a health potion, please, coupon. Uh, here, there is more stuff to buy. And thankfully, after certain checkpoints in the game, the, the, the shop gets restocked. Well, not just that, are there, they're more useful because of that, but also because you can sell things. Yes. In uh, Shadow Tower, you can only trade things on one-to-one basis for health potions. Here, you have every once in a while, you find a healer who you can trade uh, one item for to get a full kind of refill of your health. But just not like a, a Shadow potion. Tower. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, well, in Shadow Tower, you would trade it for a health potion. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. And in here, you just, it's a direct, like, it's a it's a wizard sphere or whatever that just heals you. Um, but you can trade items for Qunes. And again, though, you run out of stuff to spend money on. Um, so it seems like that equipment abundance would play really well with this because you're going back and selling all your junk loot, but not really. No. Um, because you get like two cunes per thing and there's just nothing to save up for. Like, 
you know, there, there's there's no like big high value items. You <laughs> you outpace the economy so quick. Yeah, there's no there's no bike that costs forty seven thousand tickets. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, so, uh, j- just like I did with Shadow Tower, I wanted to trace a little bit of like lineage here. So the producer of this game, Toshifumi Nabashima, um, would go on to, uh, write the script or help write the script for Dark Souls 2. Mm-hmm. And the concept artist for this, who did the, uh, the characteristic batshit <laughs> designs, uh, would go on and do, uh, design work for all of the Souls games and for Bloodborne. Yeah. Yeah. Which, yeah, that, which makes sense. Yeah. That's Daisuke, uh, Satake. Um, so this is a much better received game by by critics uh, than Shadow Tower was. Um, if you remember, Shadow Tower got kind of roundly shat upon. Um, but despite this, never came out in America. Um, there is that there was actually an official English localization that was in development at Agitech, but uh, Sony canceled this, which is a bummer. Which Damn. is why we had to go and do the uh, the fan translated ISO, which you can Google. Um, it's out there. Yeah, the uh, the project lead from uh, from Agitech, you know, who was kind of responsible for this, uh, he really fought tooth and nail to make sure that uh, that Sony uh, kept this project alive. But instead, they brought out uh, Echo Night Beyond, which is yeah. also a good game. Yes. However, uh, boycott Sony. <laughs> yep. the, um, <laughs> Boy- so, boycott Sony. Boycott from anybody who does anything you don't like. Boycott. Yes, because uh, <laughs> that's the most effective way to communicate. <laughs> Uh, I say that like there's an effective way to communicate this stuff, but how about you just don't communicate it because you're powerless in the universe about some things and that's okay. Yeah. Like if, if you can't accept being powerless about anything, <laughs> like boy, are you signing yourself up for a lifetime of unhappiness, consumer revoltist. Uh, anyway, um, the, uh, yeah. So, and, and I write, you know, you play it on an emulator, it plays great. Yeah. Um, it is, uh, it works well. You can, you have your save states right there in case you need them. You won't really, but in case you need them, mm-hmm. um, it is, uh, it is a, a fun, good time and is recommended. I'm glad we're going to be able to talk about it. Yeah. Um, I didn't realize the fan translation happened so late. Like this kind of, uh, if this show had happened, I mean, it couldn't have happened at a different time because of when <laughs> souls games came out, but that's uh that's relatively recent. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that is, that, that, that is, uh, within the, uh, the, the lifetime of the network. Yeah. Yeah. So oh. definitely, it's it's really cool. I'm happy that they did it. Uh, so normally, we would say right now how far we're going to go into the game. Uh, much like with the game itself, we're not quite sure how long all of this is going to take. So we're going to see wh- where we're at after a certain point and then gauge from there. Yes. Yeah. Which I think will be okay. I think there's it, it a rare listener who is playing along, is halfway through the game, is going to listen to us, you know, to that point, but won't listen to the next episode. Right. Or you know, if if we start talking about something you don't want spoiled, uh, turn it off. There's oh, there's so little story to this game mm-hmm. um, that I don't think you will be hurt. Right. Uh, if you accidentally hear us talk about an area that you haven't been to yet. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah. So uh, again, that plot is very you know segueing into how slight this plot is. Uh, Cole, <laughs> tell us a little bit about the setup here. Yes. So there was once a prosperous kingdom that was ruled over by a king with an all-powerful spear. This spear happens to look very similar to the crown that we got at the end of uh, Shadow Tower 1. It has this creepy all-seeing eye into it. And this king who bore this creepy spear, uh, the seat of his power was this massive dark tower. Um, and this is where our main character, uh, who is an explorer, is kind of taken again in this uh, what has to be a mid 20th century uh, time period uh, to this ruined tower where an old man, this uh, this elderly guide, locks him in, locks him in there and tells him that he has to seek the spear and climb to the top of the tower if he wants to escape. And so locked inside this shrine, turning around, there is a, there, there's an inscription on the door. The spear bearer commands us only he may leave the abyss. Yes. So as opposed to the very quaint story of Shadow Tower, where you're trying to save your grandma <laughs> from, from the village as a, as a, a grandma visitor, uh, <laughs> this one, it is just you're just a guy who's walking around and gets kind of catfished into this tower. And, and that's it. <laughs> like the, like there's not a you know there's no desire for you to be the king or anything like that or become the spear carrier or whatever the spear bearer you just want um, out <laughs> yeah you just want you just want out like it's an escape room <laughs> and you're, you're just that's the key so uh and that that kind of sets us off with you know into uh shadow tower with the uh the shrine below the forest which is our first area yes and i wish that all of the areas uh kept names like this as opposed to descending oh, into <laughs> world area <laughs> 
<laughs> zone. They, this, this is setting a new standard for unimaginative area names <laughs> in games, yep. not just in, in from games. It was named by an intern on the last day. <laughs> and then it, it also it becomes really like Teflon-y to remember what's even there. Like I'm <laughs> I'm following along. Um, there's one one person, um, the same person who did the Shadow Tower stuff, I believe, mm-hmm. um, has a fan site where he did maps for this game, which we'll put in the show notes because they're very handy. Yeah. If you're playing it again, don't feel bad. The game probably should have had a map. Um, but uh, uh, there's, it's really hard to remember what these are, so I'm following along with that just so I can remember what the difference is between the red <laughs> sand area and, you know, the, the curling area or what have you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, you know where you're brushing yeah. the ice yeah yeah so so we're at the shrine below the forest and this uh this is a pretty familiar site we're on this uh narrow walkway in a dark room as this torch that is dropped to the ground kind of burns out leaving you in darkness yeah it's, it's kind of a rare set piece moment mm-hmm. it's pretty rad and as you head down the stairs um going <laughs> further in there is an instant death trap yep <laughs> um which there it's the only one in the game like yeah. it feels like a thesis statement but it's not no it's just it's almost like we're transitioning out of classic from games and into this baby mode from game from game <laughs> for, yeah, this is the last wait, little, the stupid like, game for babies yeah, this is, yeah, this is stupid babies need the most attention. This is a, it's almost like we're transitioning out, and it's like one little like gasp of like super hard difficulty. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it, it, it makes me think of the ancient city, the, the little lava pit that everyone steps in that yep. doesn't look like lava. But there's there's a, a tombstone that will fall over on you, and it's uh, <laughs> it's hit point independent. Uh, you can go into new game plus in this game, and I walk down to see if the hip, if the tombstone would still kill me, and uh, it does. It's <laughs> just a so, kill box. Yeah, it is just a kill box. Uh, so it's just this little trap, and then you just start over, and then never worry about such things again. <laughs> um, not that there aren't traps, but they are not a big deal. Right. No. So down at the end of this hallway, we have uh, we have the soldier who whose presence led me to believe that he was like part of my unit, and we like yeah. ran here for cover or something. Like I had already forgotten the opening cutscene and stuff by the point that this happened. I was like, oh, I'm a soldier, and we're all like looking for look, <laughs> we're like stars. We're looking for uh, for shelter inside of this, and it was a we got more than we bargained for. But no, no, he's just a soldier who's there for some reason, asking how did we end up in a place like this, and uh, you can grab the knife off of his body after he dies. It's it's a good question, and we're going to run into dozens of soldiers. Yes, like there are just uh, tons of dead soldiers here. Which I like, was there some kind of military operation? Mm-hmm. Again, like if there was more kind of text to the game, there might be an explanation for that. <laughs> but as it is, you know, not the case. Like there's just uh, you, they're, they're treasure boxes. Yeah. Um, usually, soldiers are, are where you're going to find ammo clips. Um, otherwise, they they have a single solitary cun. It looks a little bit like a dog tag, actually. Yeah. Um, which would, would again would have been like kind of a weird lore thing if that was <laughs> what was going on, but it's not. If if dog tags were the currency, so the monsters yeah. lured them in to, to to as a stimulus package. Well, I was that, that's um I had it a little less like cart before before the horse. Like <laughs> yep. the soldiers were here and they they turned it into a currency because they were pretty <laughs> interesting. But then but, they but then they had to get more soldiers. It's true. They, they, they ran out. <laughs> it's, not, it's not. It's actually not. A, that's. It's because they can't buy anything with their in gold, jewel encrusted right. uh, blades and and uh, and stuff either. <laughs> They're worthless. It's the uh, what, what would happen if diamonds started falling from the sky one day? Uh, hypothesis. Exactly. Yeah. Oh no, it's raining again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the, the, I'm I'm gonna say I'm gonna make up lore and say that Kuhn's have always been dog tags. Okay. And there are dog tags here as well. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing in the text to contradict it. So why yeah. don't we go hog wild? <laughs> yeah. Because it's it's a it's a cool idea. And uh, and the, the game for being as fun as it is to play and is as pretty and unsettling as it is at times. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Um. Yeah, so you introduced to these enemies, these uh these little red imps. Yeah. They're called galps. <laughs> um. And and this is how you're kind of accidentally introduced to these this uh dismemberment. <laughs> the the dismemberment plan that you have for the rest of the uh the game the, the the moment when i cut off one of their arms it was kind of like oh no i broke it like yes. <laughs> like it didn't feel it, it felt like a glitch like it's presented just fine like it, mm-hmm. it they're, they're just it it didn't comport with anything i knew it was a genuine surprise mm-hmm. yeah me too <laughs> it's not it's not like a back of the box quote for this game when people talk about it but it is a really cool thing that i think would get more people into the game mm-hmm You know, not that it's totally unique. Like there are other games that do that, but one, this is like a really early game that does that. Yeah. You know, like it it predates uh, like your dead spaces and the whatever uh, by quite a bit. Yeah. Um, You know, it it doesn't. It's uh, it's like Red Faction for bodies. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, which which is a cool like a red. I got I got catfished in by Red Faction until I played it, <laughs> and it's like one of the most boring shooters I've ever played all the way through. <laughs> the, but, the trick to Red Faction is to play the demo. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Where you just tunnel around with a rocket launcher and it's super yep. fun. Um, yeah. And then you actually play the game and like woof. Yeah. Uh, except for uh, not Armageddon. Uh, uh, Gorilla. Gorilla's. Good. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. it gets good. The first one's pretty bad though. I think. Yeah. Um, the other thing you you can do in addition to kind of having this uh, this agency with your weapon is you can mow down grass. Yeah. Um, which is useful because there's shit hiding down there. Like yeah. usually there's there's swords and there's coons and stuff. Um, so you can kind of uh, cut through again this this whole Vietnam thing <laughs> that you're doing. You can kind of cut through the jungle with yeah, your machete. You're defoliating. Yeah. Yeah. Which doesn't uh, drain away your uh, your durability actually. So again, go hog wild. And and you're going to end up with so many weapons that durability is going to cease to matter. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. So. Um, so so these gulps, uh, they intru- like they're goofy. They're really really goofy looking. Like they're these little red guys with bright with bright orange eyes. Uh, they're apparently made out of condoms loosely held together with scotch tape. Um, and it also introduces something about the enemy design in this game, which is uh, it is very puerile in a lot of cases. The gulps straight up have anus mouths. Yeah, they do have kind of butthole mouths. The other example that you're calling puerile, I don't see nearly as much as you do. Really? Huh. Um, y- yeah. <laughs> I'm not trying to turn it into a joke that it's just a thing for you to see dicks where they're not dicks. But since we, we just did the Silent Hill episode as well, too, I think that, like, maybe there's something there. Um, where oh. there there's simply... Uh, well, yeah, okay. I'm just, well, I'm, I'm, just, I'm on blast now. Cool. Was that, was that on blast? I was just teasing you about uh, seeing dicks everywhere. Yeah, I just the, uh, I, I I look at those things. I see dicks. They they kind of look like dicks, but it's mm-hmm. also a callback to the Havel's Club thing and stuff too. I know it's not really putting on blast. <laughs> I don't know if I'd say that, uh, but it just it's funny that we just did a game that has lots of dicks where there mm-hmm. are uh, sometimes dicks, um, dicks where where dicks not ought be. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so these guys do have uh, little anus mouths, though. That is 100% true. Yeah. I did see a but me. I see buttholes everywhere. Okay. Maybe that's just my thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. The, uh, so, so you're finding these things. You're kind of moving your way uh, through this, uh, picking up some items, getting some some healing potions and stuff. And you, you're introduced to these kind of lore notes that are on the wall uh, from time to time. And uh, you run into one that says, uh, does the boat go to the tower? They got the others. Must find the spear soon. Um, <laughs> which is written by somebody i don't yeah. know um but we'll, we'll find that boat eventually and in, in a weird again like kind of set piece that doesn't add up to much right um but what it does tell you is that you're not in the tower yet right. which is kind of interesting yeah this is uh, the, the, this is a shrine that is some distance away mm-hmm. yeah and also there are people who speak english writing in their own blood in front of you yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> or yeah, the just, blood of somebody else this this, pen, this, this, this 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 could be a uh, gulp juice you know yes a big yeah. gulp um, we're going to meet the big gulp here pretty soon, though, uh, because the quiddle gulp, the boss gulp, uh, yes. quiddle is the uh, it is the highest honorific in Shadow Tower society, as we're going to see. Uh, but these are kind of the, uh, the 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 trolls. These are the varsity level um, guys for this, and they've got the uh, they've got the big clubs. And uh, when you when you shoot its its head off, it just gets angry and attacks harder. Yes, but when you cut its arm off, it loses some verbs. So you should cut off its arm or shoot off its arm. Yeah. Um, I tended to not use my gun all the time in the game just because I was still in scarcity mode. It took me a long time to figure out that that wasn't going to be a thing. Yeah. Uh, but these guys I would use my gun on. Um, or you can do a thing uh, that's real like a fun tactic because enemies don't have really good AI in this game. That actually was a back of the box quote mm-hmm. was this idea like, you know, advanced AI enemies will run away when they're hurt. <laughs> it's like, well, they kind of gallop in circles from time to time, but I don't know how, how good the AI is. Yeah. But you can kind of stand back and see a field of these things and like kind of selectively cripple them. Yeah. Uh, you know, like I'm going to shoot off these things' arms before I get down there, or I'm going to shoot these things, uh, shoot them in the head, which does seem to have some effect. Like they still attack, but they get more li- like listless. Mm-hmm. Um, you can kind of soften up a, a unit of these uh, from, from the outside, which is super cool. Yeah, just by taking a couple pot shots. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, like, we're like, we haven't really described this, but this is like an underground forest almost. Yes. And we're going through these kind of like rocky, rocky tunnels, which is a little bit of a shame because it does feel like, aside from the kind of organic feel of the place, like, you know, there, there are slopes going up and down at random intervals. Like, everything feels like hand sculpted a little bit. Like, this still is tunnels. Um, we, yes. we, we haven't gotten to, to a lot of the variety just yet. There are a lot of like side paths you can take to, uh, many of which are just hidden behind destructible walls. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's going to be a thing. Um, and again, it almost feels like it's kind of trying to work purposely against your expectations with Shadow Tower because I am loath to hit a wall because that's going to take like three uses out of my sword. Um, but again, it's not really a thing here. Um, I don't even know if the, if hitting a wall does affect your durability, mm -hmm. if it's a breakable wall in this game. But uh, I, I, again, it took, it took me a while to figure out I'm living in a post-scarcity <laughs> utopia. I, I, I did a couple of tests and I didn't see the number go down. Yeah. So I don't know if I just didn't test enough or if it's not the case. So if I yeah. if, if if I didn't do my due diligence there, forgive me. And and some of the the walls are very obviously signposted. The other ones that are uh, not so obviously signposted tend to be where you expect them to be. Right. Like there are a couple of places where it's like, oh, this can't be a dead end, and you're right. Yeah. And you can uh, you can kind of hunt around, which was was pretty satisfying. Like the the secret rooms in this game feel non arbitrary and and uh, satisfyingly hidden to me. Yeah, and you definitely will like take down a wall, go on a path, and then come out back in a place where you once were before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like the actual design, as far as the layout of the, the levels, does not feel random or arbitrary. Like it's pretty good, Yeah, I think. Um, so, so you make your way kind of through, kind of uh, through, you fought the big gulps, and uh, we get to our first save point, which is this uh, this pillar with a, a floating like kind of egg that has a suggestion of an eye on it. There are all different colors of these. Yeah. Um, the red one very much looks like a baylet, and these uh, these take the place of the tombstones that were our all-purpose uh, interaction points. Yeah. From this or from Shadow Tower One. Yeah. Um, there's a side path here where you can go up and find some gapus that are guarding these uh, these cocooned bodies. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the gapus specifically are the are the gulps that uh, uh, kind of crawl on the ground. They're almost like fetuses. And yeah. I think they do some light uh, some light status effect on you. Yeah. Um, these things are. There's a weird uh, way status effects are handled in this game, um, where as opposed to getting a symbol, like you get a little cartoon ten ton weight in Shadow Tower, mm -hmm. um, you get a, a sound effect. Mm -hmm. And uh, I the over equipped one is this heartbeat kind of drone. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And I listened to that so much because I was over equipped. So often overburdened, um, but it makes it hard to know, like off the top of your head, what is affecting you. Yeah. Um, you know, so you don't really know whether it's even like. Sometimes it feels like the music. You know, <laughs> like oh, this is just part of the soundtrack. Yeah. Uh, because there is a, a soundtrack in this, or there's music, unlike Shadow Tower One, even though it's still pretty slight. Yeah, it's mostly like area stings. Yeah, the, which the, are great. Yeah. Like the one for the uh, the airy um, yep. is 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 one of my favorites. Like that's really really excellent. It's so good. And the the just going back into the uh, the main hub mm -hmm. one with the electronica kind of thing is super cool. Yeah, I hope I can find uh, some examples of that. Yeah, it, it, like uh, it might be tricky because there's this is played on YouTube, mm -hmm. but uh, actually you should find um you should do it through from Allison's stream because yes. her uh, commentary is all through annotations. Yeah, that's the that that that's the thought that occurred to me. Yeah, so you won't have any heavy breathing like. <laughs> <laughs> mouse goblins uh, yep. talking over it yeah so. uh but but uh but yeah you you do have the uh the, the the musical stings there which which is nice i forget where you were going oh yeah just um you know just kind of further in so you're talking about the uh the fetus creatures yes um yeah. you fight those and you kind of um you know find those bodies you also move further into this grotto uh where you get a, a jacket uh, like a cool <laughs> cool red jacket um and then there are these caster gapos who shoot ice arrows at you um, so, and th those are actually pretty tricky. Yeah. Um, it introduces some of that kind of tactical, you know, not quite finding cover, but, you know, you don't want to be fighting a, a regular big gulp while a, uh, an ice gapu mm -hmm. is, uh, is nearby as so, the saying goes. <laughs> yes. As, as my Grammy, <laughs> Grammy used to say, um, <laughs> no, no. So the, like a little bit like dodging spells in this feels a little bit like dodging missile, um, uh, attacks and doom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just just a little bit with how quickly they're going to shoot them at you and with how eminently dodgeable the attacks are. Yeah, with their projectile attacks. Yeah. No, there, are, there are no enemies that have a hit scan. Right. Things. And for the most part, um, I never felt like there was, there's way less mandatory damage in this game than Shadow Tower. Right. There are fewer kind of area effect things that are huge and have weird hit boxes or anything like that. Like you can, you can play this skillfully and dodge a lot of things, which is super cool. Yeah. Um, we get a little bit further on. There's a body that has this guy with glasses, this Poindexter, uh, who says, uh, they ambushed us. Why do I live? <laughs> Why do I live? <laughs> Why do I live? Um, I don't know, buddy. Give me a coon. <laughs> Give me your dog tag. Yes. <laughs> your name belongs to me now. <laughs> yeah. I, will I will trade it for a mushroom drink. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> your wife would understand. Um, 
I mean, only one of us is going to get out of here. But yeah, you can you can see this guy, you can see this nerd um, leaning up against this rock. Actually, from near the beginning of the stage, he's like drenched in sun uh, from somewhere leaning there. And it kind of is reminiscent of uh, Oscar of Astora from mm -hmm. the beginning of Dark Souls. Yes, except more nerdy. Yes. Um, but you know where you're, you're going to go and you get the sword from the stone, which is your first kind of full full length sword. Yeah, which makes a big difference. Um, the the weapons uh, we talked about those uh, endurance gems that you have that determine how many actions you get, and that's tied to your weapon size and your stats. Yes. So um, you know, using a big weapon, usually for most weapons, you can use three. You can do three things before having to wait. Um, daggers, you can do more. Guns, you can do six, which is kind of cool. It represents bullets and kind of your uh, yeah. you know finger finger tiredness. <laughs> and then <laughs> the. Uh, yeah, and then big heavy weapons, you can only do two usually. Yeah. Um, which makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so you uh, you grab the sword from the rock and you kind of drop down um, going through this misty tunnel here. Yeah, and you get to this uh, kind of Stygian landing, this the, the, this river with a boat, like a, like, like a gondola there. And there's this amphibious boatman who says, I, uh, to guide you, vile things, I am commanded. There is no escape from this world. Do not oppose the powerful. Serve. So yes. his advice as he is taking you to the actual tower is that like you have been sent, you know, like I've, I've seen a bunch of people come here, <laughs> uh, come here with the same look in their eye, like do like we do and just chill for a second because, you know, towards the top is madness. Yes. If you attack this guy, he will hit you with his ore, which is also a one shot kill box. Hmm. Um, so that will kill you in one hit. So, uh, Having having save states means I tried to kill everything, <laughs> um, you know, just to see what would happen. Yeah. And because I don't care about any of them, um, <laughs> you know, because it's because we, we get to this area that's the closest thing this game has to a town. Even though I didn't spend a lot of time here, like you don't have to go back very often since the town just has a, a collection of these gems. But you end up in the the quiet shore slash blue light area. <laughs> yep, they couldn't uh, even call it like like the, the 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 central ascent or the blue ascent or something like that. Yeah, or or like weirdo town <laughs> po population freak goblins. Yeah, po po you know? population hood frogs. Yeah, yeah, these things. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so you head up the shore up to this in insignia door, and this this uh, this kind of set piece is really nice, um, I think. And uh, yeah. there's an insignia on the door that says uh, "Piercing Cold River to the Central Tower." Yes. So that is uh, where you have just come from. And when you step out and look up, like you are in this, it's kind of a, it's a hard space to understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so like you just say, it is, it is this wide open cavern with uh, with like these blue lights that are kind of crawling up these uh, these spires uh, kind of in the center. And these things live inside these uh, again, these hood frogs, these amphibious kind of creatures that have no real context that give you just a little bit of uh, a little bit of history about their role here and uh, and and uh, kind of what what society is like here at the base of the tower. It seems pretty chill. Like yep. you, you kind of stand around. There's one of them that gets to stand on a stage. I don't know mm -hmm. if they're like times he puts on shows or what have you. Um, I kept expecting the one on the stage to do something <laughs> um, or, or be, you know, I, I came back here a couple of times just to see if anything had changed. And uh, no. So th this is a real weird. This is weird. I think um, it is. It is kind of close to a story moment. Um, mm -hmm. And some of them say, cool, like there's all, every so many things in this game. I just want to like post a screen cap of on Twitter and just be like, same. <laughs> uh, there's so many of the like we accept our fate we exist only to exist <laughs> you know um i think i did that with some of the things from the emboss because we would get some real evocative uh existential stuff mm -hmm. then but so we find these guys came from the abyss yes to find out y your mind could not comprehend our world yes and yes. Th there's a little bit where they talk about how, being strong yeah. Here too. There's really introduced this idea of like having to be the strongest person to have the spear. And to become the strongest, you have to defeat the seven lords to be called the destroyer, which is the person <laughs> who can earn the spear. Yes. So. Which, which is pretty cool. I want to be the destroyer. Yeah. yeah. Even destroyers have a price. It is a uh, that uh <laughs> and and we, we learn a little bit about uh, who I assume is the main character from the first game. That's all I Maybe? can think of. Yeah. Yeah. I which mean, would just... be cool. If it's not that, then what a bummer. <laughs> yeah. Um so. Be because I, I kind of forget was it still uh was it still a crown or a helmet at the end of uh shadow tower it's uh it's it's like an eye yeah like i don't think it's it explicitly reads as a crown there. but, but that's so it, that that's just like it, it's it's called a crown like in the like yes. like in the notes and stuff 
And that could have been a translation thing too. Like it could be a metaphorical crown. Yeah. You know, it is like a symbol of power. Um, but if this isn't the the character from then, then it just it's some Yahoo. It's a, uh, it's just another cycle. Like like yes. oh somebody somebody came and killed uh, killed uh, who who's it? What's a Shadow Tower man? Um, and uh, hey, hey, check this out. Yeah. What if the person who uh, took the spear is you? Because this game has a new game plus loop. Oh. So like you're just that is the you who came here before that it's referring to. Yeah. And you're like Groundhog Day in it. Hmm. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know either. Like, <laughs> like, like, the, like the stuff that happens in the in the cycle has to be like you, you know, <laughs> the, the the idea that you're going through and killing your killing your friends um, needs yes. to be sold a little bit, like for this to be your hell of going through it over and over. One hundred percent. There's nothing to support anything. <laughs> yeah. it, it is. It is just. A, it is so story light, but like, it is just. Uh, it makes you want to. You know, you make out shapes in the dark. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. Yeah, so I can only assume that 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 R- Ralphio or whatever his name is from uh, from the original is the destroyer right now. Um, his name his name is lost to to, uh, to legend. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, so you can see them kind of experimenting with these themes they're going to talk about in Dark Souls. Yeah. Right. Like this this is some this is some Souls ass stuff uh, without any development. The the big kind of part to this uh, big kind of point to this town, other than the fact that everything is too far away from each other mm-hmm. um, when you first get there, is that there is this uh, the little hub of shops where there's a repair shop, a sa- uh, sa- save, um, a and a heal section, a repair a shop, a save section, and a heal. Yes. Um, and there we actually find somebody familiar. There's a carryover NPC um, in Ariel. Or uh, Rufu, um, Ru Ru Rufan, Ru Rufan, um, who is the demon lady from uh, Shadow Tower One? Yes, the one that you freed from the from the clay demon, who yes. uh, who kind of helped you towards the end. So the the the, the lady with the uh, uh, kind of big horns on her head. Yes. Yeah. And so she says, "The human speaks. Is it brave or stupid? Power alone proves your worth in this world. So show me power." And gives you the key to the first area. Yes. The Chasm Nexus, which uh, gets you um, into the actual base of the tower, uh, where there is a non-functional elevator and two ways you can go. Yes. And uh, this is actually kind of a bummer, because if you there's a definite right way to go. Um, the key to go the, the left way is in the area to the right. Yeah. So you need to kind of explore this in a counterclockwise fashion. Um, otherwise you just kind of bang your head up against the, the area to the left and enemies respawn, um, if not endlessly, at least frequently. Yeah. So there's very little advantage, like clearing out the area to the left first. You just end up having to do it again. Right. Um, so that's what I did because I didn't know which way to go. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and the reason I didn't know which way to go is because when you go to the right to the insect area, um, one of the first things you have to run into is a breakable wall. And I was still <laughs> hesitant to, to waste my equipment on that stuff. Yeah. Still hesitant to, to, to use up your edge juice. On yes. the uh, on the rocks, yeah. yeah. On, on the let's, rocks. Uh, let's talk up. about uh, insect area. Yes, the, the amazingly <laughs> named insect area. <laughs> yes, they could have called it like the the festering hive or something like yeah. that. Yeah, anything. Yeah. What yeah. is the hive? Yeah, literally. <laughs> let's like, go, let's go to the festering hive, Gary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're, we're gonna make up new names for these on the fly. Um, okay, the the festering hive. Yeah, and I'm I'm not doing this to to take anything away from the translator. He was probably just being accurate. We're gonna we're gonna jazz this up. This is a punch up, Gary. There we go. Yeah. So you so you go into the festering hive, and uh, this place, uh, as the name kind of uh, um, uh, implies, is full of these bugs. These things called raldos, um, <laughs> and and uh, this is kind of their hatching ground, right? Yes. Yeah. They're a lot like Rengos. Yes. But, the, but now they're Raldos. Um, <laughs> you mean and, they're fun for kids and adults? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Um, so, so you go through and there, there are, you find them, they also, just like cicadas, they leave their bodies behind mm-hmm. when they, you know, they I guess they mold. So there are all these like kind of husks of them, which is great. Yeah. And uh, they're breakable. So you can bust them open to get the sweet, sweet, delicious cunes inside. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, From all the soldiers they ate. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> Building it up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> There's another kind of lore note here uh, that you find where it says uh, they don't speak, only their bodies betray their presence. Which uh, I don't know what that means. <laughs> it, it's true of the Raldos. Yeah. Um, because it, the next area we're going to go, they do speak. Yeah. Um, you know, eventually you start destroying civilizations in this game. <laughs> yeah. uh, most notably the bird, the peaceful bird people. <laughs> you just go and kill <laughs> yeah. their babies, um, which I could like the, the boy does that. 
I laughed a lot at that chapter. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so these guys, they, they do not speak. Only their bodies betray their presence. Yes. Maybe, maybe it's saying that the sounds they make when they move. Like, mm, you, you know, that's what you're hearing. Chitter, chitter, chitter. Yeah. Yeah, they make kind of a chittering sound. Yeah. So so the, the, the way that this area is gated uh, is with literal gates. Uh, you have mm-hmm. these uh, um, doors that have, uh, like, kind of insect parts over top of them. And they're these basically act as, like, proximity keys. So you have to go to the end of one path and kill the special bug there to get either the antenna or the leg or something that will cause the uh, that will cause these doors to open up for you. Yes. Yeah. So you're kind of, you're just kind of pushing forward the ways you can. Eventually you find one of these things. It's not too difficult. Um, this is like kind of a winding cavern, but it looks more complicated than it is. Yeah. It um, feels, it feels pretty confusing. Um, again, like those maps are pretty great. Even if you don't go to the defunct uh, Angel Fire page, the maps uh, on Game Facts are, uh, are useful enough. Yes. And, and don't be uh, fooled. In your menu in this game, there's an option for Atlas. But it's really just like a scrapbook. It's like, I've been here, you know, so you get a little like single picture of the insect area. It doesn't actually show a map. Yeah. And don't get confused with the other option for Atlas, which just lists the names of Persona characters. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Or uh, the the Titan that's holding up the world. The sky. Uh, either or. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you uh, you kind of move further in and you're introduced to this NPC that I thought would have more to do with anything. Yep. Uh, this, this like pretty badass warrior who is alive. And leaning up against the wall. Yep. Um, who is another person who's doing what you're doing, I guess. Yeah, yeah. It says, I must defeat this insect lord to go further. Um, and gives you a bit of a pro tip that this thing is uh, is invulnerable while the light shines. And he actually serves the spear king. Yes. Yes. Yep. The, 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 uh, the, his king found the spear and used its eye to build, the king, to build his kingdom. Yes. And I tried to kill this guy um, to see what would happen. And I couldn't. Um, he was too tough. Oh, so he, so so he fights. He engages. Yes. Nice. Yeah. So if you if you shoot him from down the hallway and then back up as far back as you can while shooting him, <laughs> you'll waste all of your ammo and he will not die. Um, I, I'm fairly certain you probably can kill him. Um, that seems like in line with this game because everybody back in that uh, that town uh, where the where the sorceress was, I tried to kill them. Yeah. And uh, and could, and then I uh, attacked Ariel and uh, she killed me. So I think that you can, but eventually. Uh, spoiler, she dies. So you can, uh, or she, she can die. Um, so you can, uh, I think you probably can kill him. You just have to be better at this game than I am. Yeah. So, um, you, you go down this hallway that he's in and you find the, the big insect Lord, uh, <laughs> here, the, uh, the giant version of him. And this, it does this very counterintuitive thing. Uh, cause we know he's immortal. The warrior told us, and he says, I am immortal. Uh, <laughs> resistance is foolish, but to continue in the game, you have to run past him to another door. Yes. Um, which is very counterintuitive. Like, I've seen this boss chamber. I need to come back here when I've done the thing. Yeah. But the thing is actually behind him, which is pretty smart mm-hmm. of him to actually guard the <laughs> his immortality <laughs> button, you know, see? Uh, <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, so you have to intuit that you uh, can, can run around behind him and also pick the correct door because the other one is, uh, is, is, is locked. Um, yes. And uh, well, you're, you're, you're under attack the whole way. And this gets you yes. into kind of the upper the upper area here where uh, where, again, you have uh, kind of a cool little bit of uh, world building. You start seeing these uh, these little Raldos uh, spitting webbing onto the floor and walls. Yeah. Yeah. Just you walk in and they're already doing it. Yeah. And just like Ugh. it's like walking <laughs> on anybody doing anything biological. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking about like the only thing I want to walk in and have somebody doing is sneeze. Yeah. And then I'm okay if they're if I walk in on somebody sneezing. <laughs> I don't feel embarrassed. But anything else, like I just you know, if, if if you were horking up something to coat your carpet with coal slime, <laughs> I think I would probably like just like back away, even if you were fully clothed. I just I just had like like what would make walking in on somebody sneezing disturbing if they sneezed with their eyes wide open and didn't bother covering their mouth. Yeah, like eye <laughs> contact. <laughs> <laughs> it's like <laughs> like at that yeah. point it's just a yell. <laughs> Yeah, just like like right, yeah, like a chant. It's a full body paroxysm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, I didn't see you come in. How much I, of that I, did you see? <laughs> we, we, that implies that you didn't see the first part of it before, like, that caused the sneeze. Um, I've, I've sneezed while having sex before, so that would be like the, the thing that. But that's not why you're you don't want to walk in. Yeah. It's not because like oh you're sneezing. <laughs> What's the big deal? Oh no, he was you know he was going at it too. Like, <laughs> Yeah, but but that that's a that's a tricky maneuver. You have to like th- I've done some real kind of like last minute, you know, dodging in front of a bullet, like throwing my face into a pillow, <laughs> kind of things. 
to make sure I don't uh, actually spray. It's like you're diving on a grenade. Ex- exactly. <laughs> like I've got to get something in front of this nose before I just kind of make spray over this person that has deigned to touch me. Um, <laughs> Oh, oh gosh uh, but, but what they're doing the, the slime that they're working on on the ground is this w- gross webbing that slows you down yes um which is uh kind of a bummer and they're going to do that a couple times in this game yeah so um, that just makes it so that any of these uh enemies that are uh doing like ranged attacks can just gun you down yes you can't close the distance and yep. most of this like little little hive over here is going to be uh is, is going to be full of this or at least intermittently yes. right you're also yeah. introduced uh you can pick up a cursed wand here that uh that instills blindness in you and uh, i can never figure out what the uh <laughs> what the metric was for whether or not something would be cursed yeah it, it's uh it it says it is um because it, it's it, but it's tricky though because it says um <laughs> The, like the the language either says like causes blind or mm-hmm. just blinds yeah and i think causes blinds means it's a verb that the wand does to other people mm-hmm. blinds mean it means it does it to you yeah i could never i could never figure out what was like pointing in and what was pointing out i yeah. couldn't figure out which <laughs> which end of the gun fired yeah it's it's tricky and there are some there is some kind of like powerful cursed equipment and you can do the thing where you have other equipment that nullifies mm-hmm. uh the curse um but it's fiddly you know um having putting them on in the right order is important because if you put on a piece of equipment that nullifies a static that uh, status effect it doesn't get rid of the status effect if you already have it right it just prevents new instances of it so if you if you put that on first and then put on the thing you can kind of get away with it but again it doesn't end up being really worth it because the ultra powerful stuff that's cursed is not that powerful um the best ring i got in the game uh, did not have magic attached to it. So that was the closest thing it had to a curse. Mm-hmm. Um, but it wasn't, you know, that was worth it. But it wouldn't yeah. have been worth, like, reconfiguring the rest of my equipment to stop myself from being blinded. Yeah. 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 Um, you're also introduced to these really upsetting-looking spiders that have the, like, they they are the particular video game spider that has the rotund abdomen. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like the big filled with blood. Yeah. Kind of, like, tick-style thing, even though that's not what's going on. Yeah. Um, yeah, these things are real creepy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so there's a there, there's a locked door that you have to go really far out of your way uh, to mm-hmm. uh, to get through. Uh, you can pick up a flintlock pistol here as well, which is just a strong gun that has very little ammo that only has two shots. Yes. But yeah. yeah. And so to get the uh, the key to the queen's to the queen's secret, which sounds so naughty, <laughs> um, you have to uh, you have to kind of like go around into uh, the the aviary kind of side of this. You have to go up um, to the upper chambers where all the flying insects are. And apparently the flying insects and the ground insects have a little bit of beef because you're walking in on them kind of skirmishing with each other. Yeah, which is kind of awesome. Like, again, that's like kind of a cool little story beat. Like uh, it, it's the Landians, <laughs> the, the, the Landians oh, versus the yeah. uh, the flying uh, heart bats. You mean from Eternity's Child? Everybody's favorite. Uh, everybody's favorite fairy tale. Yes. Okay. Uh, this is my favorite fairy tale like game. Um, <laughs> so the, you know, and I'm purely Landian. Hmm. Like I am. I'm a slow ground paced unit. So like, if I'm gonna be you know on either of these sides, it's gonna be the land side. Um, yeah. So you, this is when you first start fighting uh, large types or large amounts of flying creatures. Uh, in this and the uh one of the things that you know we talked about uh we talked about it in demon souls and then in dark souls they kind of got rid of flying enemies yeah um between those two games and uh they don't quite do it right here but that's something i would love to see and whenever anyone asks us like what would you like to see in dark souls 3 Mm -hmm. Uh, i'd like to see them do flying enemies right yeah because it is unnerving and stuff but what ends up happening here is it doesn't quite work if they end up above your head like that's it for you. Yeah. Like you're you're just kind of fucked because they're just gonna keep stabbing you know the 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 top of your your head and you can't aim up that high to shoot them. Um. So they it is uh it is tricky to fight them and not that fun. Yeah. Um. I this is another place where I used a lot of ammo just to take these things out from a distance, mm-hmm. um, as best I could. Yeah. And that's uh yeah before but <laughs> really you just want to keep them out of the death zone, directed yes. directly above the crown of your head. But yeah, this is like this is a really big detour that uh, ultimately ends in a dead end with a with a safe space with a with a safe spot at the end mm-hmm. of it, um, and yeah. you have to you have to take a little bit of a leap of faith uh, from one uh, platform to another to drop off kind of back to the beginning. Yeah, to get back. I mean, you get some gear too, in, yeah. in addition to that flintlock pistol. And at this point, like it still felt like, oh, this gear must be good. Mm-hmm. Um, 
when you uh when you eventually now you have the way to get to the queen um you get there and the guy who uh actually had this uh, or when you're getting the key when you head back the guy who found the key got crushed yes um and he was writing a message about how he got the key uh, <laughs> which is very funny yeah. um but yeah, yeah. This is, is this where you, cause the, uh, the warrior that you found, he also, you find him and he died. Oh, that's uh that's in the scouring rush. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's not, not yet. Right. Yeah, he gets a little bit further. So I guess he had to have killed the queen to go further. Maybe uh, the queen comes back or something. <laughs> I don't know. Or maybe he went out for a piss and then you kill the queen and he just went through the door. Yeah. He was just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he snuck through like, he, he, I'm going to get the spear. That's, 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 yeah, that's him. That's classic spear boy. Yeah. Um, but you eventually get to the the boss of this, which I didn't really realize the names of all these things until I saw them in the notes. So, <laughs> Qu- Quiddle Raldo. Yeah, Quiddly Raldo. <laughs> is this is this a fucking Star Wars game? Like, <laughs> why is anything named Quiddly Raldo? I, I think that might be a typo on my part. Either that, okay. or it is Quid Quid Quiddly Raldo. Again, like there is a taxonomy to this. Quiddle is like boss in Sha- yeah. Shadow Tower Ease, but yes, Quiddle Raldo. Quiddle. <laughs> Quiddle. Please don't swap me on Quiddle. Uh, Fool, yeah. nothing changes. This isn't over, it says, as it dies in one hit. Yeah. 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 It's just a puzzle boss. Yeah. You don't really fight it. And the, the, uh, the whole stage is the boss. Yeah. Yeah. You could say the location is a character. Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, but she or he, whatever, drops uh, your first ring for you to cast spells. But because you have guns, range combat is not a novelty at this point. It's definitely not a novelty. I, I ended up using more spells than guns because I spent my cunes on uh, healing stuff whenever I could. Yeah. So I didn't have as much. I didn't, didn't buy as much ammo yeah. as it sounds like you did. I spent and I was spending a lot of because rings end up like you have thousands of them. Yeah. Um, and they don't weigh very much, so it was very easy to keep like my collection of like sixteen rings. Yeah, your Johnny, in my your Johnny Deppian, you know, <laughs> r- ring, <laughs> yeah. r- ring pouch that you keep around your neck again yeah, with, just, with the Rango connection. <laughs> <laughs> Rango don't stop. Quiddly <laughs> Rango. Yeah. That's what I say. Uh, but, uh, yeah. And uh, you pick up a purity crystal here, which is going to become important when we get to the next area. Yes. Uh, called Poison Area. Yes. <laughs> or uh, let, let, let's let, let, let's call this... Uh, uh, the Blight Hut? <laughs> the, 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 um, the, 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 the impure filter? I don't know. We, we've already had the impure pools, I think. And yeah. Sha- man, Shadow Tower had more evocative names than this because <laughs> it was like impure, impure pool area. That's yeah. I mean, that's not great, but it's slightly better than poison area. <laughs> yeah. um, let's let's call this the um, the 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 quagmire of sorrow. <laughs> the, 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 the municipal water filtration uh, uh, station of sorrow. Yes, of the sorrow. Qua- yes, the quagmire of sorrow. There we go. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, so you end up in this. This is one of my least favorite areas in the game. Yeah. Uh, I also missed a crystal. I hear so this is this is a, a treasure hunt. This is going through into all the areas you can get to to pick up these purity crystals. Yes. To uh, ultimately kind of purify this this quagmire. It's the way you can show to this area and God that you are going to save yourself from marriage. Yes. Yeah. And and I did as far as I know my character did not have sex before marriage <laughs> in the game. Um, no matter how quickly that girl was, <laughs> that girl is quickly poison. There we go. Uh, <laughs> That's a good song. Uh, <laughs> I'm being serious. It's a good song. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but no, uh, yeah, like this is, this is a place that apparently served a very, uh, important purpose of filtering all of the poison out, but this is menu, this is malfunctioned. And so it is, uh, uh filled with this poison purple gas and also yes. just a bunch of worms that are jumping up and down and killing you. And, and the poison, you're just going to get poisoned in this area. Like yeah. you kind of just have to spend the entire time poisoned similar to, to blight town. Um, the part of it that's annoying. So you had to find all these crystals and plop them back in their, their spaces. Um, the part that's annoying to me is that, uh, the bottom floor is too poisonous to be in. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is an area where I actually did get kind of lost. Yeah. Um, even though the game does a better job of, of giving you your bearings than the, uh, the old one did, but, uh, I actually did get lost. So I would actually like walk into that, like thinking I was moving. Oh, I haven't been here yet before. This is probably where the last crystal is. And you just walk on the floor and die, you know, more or less instantly. Yes. Like from super poison or what have you. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. From, from, from we want you to die, which I guess that is like an instant death trap. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It is a, so, but essentially just kind of poking through all these different corners, fighting worms, 
and grabbing these crystals and popping them back into place. Yes. Um, uh, the thing that I find annoying about this, uh, not not only is it kind of easy to get lost, um, but most of the uh, most of the trips you take uh, between the two floors are uh, one way. Oh, like yeah. You're just dropping, and so you have like you know th- three or four different tracks that you can take, but you have to make multiple trips around them because there will be three purification stations on one and only two crystals in that leg. And so you yes. have to go around to another one and then just make your way all the way back. And with enemies respawning like they do, um, the, it, it just feels it feels tedious in a way that is intentional. Yes. Yeah, it is. The, uh, I, I think the, the, the guy who did the maps, he also does kind of a, a walkthrough um, with it. I think that according to him, the minimum number you can do is four. Yeah. Um, four different trips, which that's that's annoying. Yeah. Um, that's too many. <laughs> um, and then I, I didn't use the walkthrough and then wish I had, because when you miss one of any of these things, mm-hmm. it's impossible to use a walkthrough to figure out which one you did. <laughs> right. So then you just have to, like, I went through this on my own, missed one of the fucking things. Now I'm going to go through using the walkthrough and just cover all of these bases and hope that I find the thing. Yeah. Um, and they're not hidden or anything either. It was just a room that I was like, every time I walked by the entrance, I was like, oh, I already checked that, mm-hmm. you know, and I just hadn't. Yeah. So, you know, it was it was kind of a pain. They're also yeah. like the, like this is a place like something about the lighting or the presence of this fog, which thankfully goes away after you put in all of the uh, all of the crystals in one particular loop. Um, there's something about it that makes the hidden walls uh, especially hard to spot. Yeah. At least so I thought so. There's one area I thought I was like, there's a dropped area you can drop down to that has a bunch of treasure, but I thought there just wasn't a way out mm-hmm. um, because the hidden wall was I, I feel like the the activation box for it was really narrow yeah um so i i missed it and i was like is this literally just a trap like i just found a bunch of soul pots this is a cool place <laughs> to be but i just got trapped well fuck me yeah to reference um, the map for that yeah and then yeah exactly and i ended up going back and and the maps are good but they're not you know amazing like it's still hard to know exactly where you're at yeah uh in these things so uh this this is this area is a bummer um eventually you kind of make all your rounds and put all the crystals in which is good the fog clears which is good, and then you can make your way back to the uh, the, the ground floor. Yeah, um, where there's a, there's a big worm down there. I shot him from up above, mm-hmm. and then dropped down because uh, I was kind of done with it and <laughs> didn't, didn't want to navigate my way down. Yeah. and uh, you you know fall damage is not too intense. Yeah, this game. Um, something that's cool about these worms, I, I didn't spot their wacky name, but uh, uh, a lot of the time there are set pieces where they will ambush you. Like you'll be mm-hmm. going to jump down a jump down one of these wells, like a Silent Hill protagonist, and a bumble just burst up and attack you. Yeah, and the the, the grubs fall from the ceiling too. Yeah, which is, which is pretty cool. And uh, there's a couple of these worm encounters that are actually very tricky um, yeah. because they're they're like sorcerer worms. That's a, a layer of the sorcerer worm. There we go. Um, who uh, who shoots you from a distance as well? So while you're trying to circle strafe the other worms, so uh, a couple of tricky uh, combat encounters. But eventually you drop down, you fight the one worm, and there's a big gate with an eye in it uh, that you can go through at this point. Now that the uh, the poison's gone, yes, and end up in the circular shrine room. Yeah, yeah, and uh, we find our old friend from before, um, mm-hmm. who is uh, kind of bleeding out on the floor something terrible has happened to him and he says i hear and i I understand the king and then he you know fades off yeah yeah um so that kind of sucks also you can't pick up his axe that sucks even worse i bet you that's if you kill him i bet you if you can kill him that's how you get that thing Ah, yeah if if it is at all possible um and you get this uh this soul shrine gem here uh which uh, says it holds hidden magic to open a path Yes. And we end up needing it during the uh, the white wall area, a.k.a., according to the guy, the chalkstone area. Yes. Which is which is slightly the chalkstone area. I'll almost give a pass. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, just uh, just call it the, the teeming quarry or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Um, but yeah, like this, uh, this opens up like right into this. There's a, a you can complete the loop by coming into this white wall area. Uh, again, the teeming quarry, uh, which is filled with these enemies called Mordors and Mordories. Mm-hmm. Um, and these are the enemies that I feel look like penises and scrotums. Mm-hmm. Um, they've got kind of like a quadruped base bodies, but they're, but their neck and head, uh, are, are like this, uh, this, the, the shaft that goes up, uh, to a single eye that has kind of a foreskin, like, uh, um, you know, um, turtleneck around it. And, uh, at the base on the front of the quadruped, uh, it's very bulbous. They've got a mouth and, uh, some of them have big beards that look like, look like bowl hair. That is my Did, case. Does your, uh, does your scrotum have a big toothy mouth? 
no, no. But okay. like, this is a this is a horrible amalgamation of a bunch of different stuff because that big toothy mouth kind of looks like an anus too. <laughs> I, I, I think I can. Dude, <laughs> that toothy mouth looks like an anus. Yeah, um, it looks. Yeah, it, it, it's it's very upsetting, regardless. Yeah, like in in a Lovecraft kind of way. Again, it's all dicks and pussies. So yeah, the, yeah. Um, I will I will put these dick monsters in the show notes so people who are listening can decide. Yeah, like to me, they just look like they have like one thick eye stalk. Mm-hmm. Which like eye stock, like you could look at a beholder and be like, oh, it looks like it has like eight penises coming off of it. Yeah. But I, I just don't think I just think of it as an eye stock. Yeah. I yeah. may need to go in and actually because I tried to look up a look up a picture because people in Slack were challenging me were challenging me over this and there's no good angle on it to actually like yeah. be able to see what I what I what I saw there. So I may end up going back in and uh getting to this point so I can so I can at least demonstrate um that I am not actually losing my mind. Well, it, it's a it's a it's a tubular object, mm-hmm. right? Like a tubular object with a ball at the end. So, like I I believe that from some angles they probably do look like penises. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't seem as like, uh, like screamingly obvious to me. Mm. Like on the on the web on the map website, there there's five of, or four of them mm-hmm. on there from different angles, and all none of these like none of these angles look particularly like penises. Yeah. And then also like I played the game and saw them, and they didn't look like dicks to me. But I can see like they're I I don't think you're crazy. I think I could see like an angle where they look like dicks. Mm-hmm. So, and also the way they move where it flops around. Yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> um, I mean, like, I, I don't think it's the craziest thing I've ever heard. Okay. Um, I just, it didn't have as big an effect on me. Yeah. Um, I thought yeah. it was funny. Like I wasn't like, how dare they? It just, no, it, made, no, it, made, it, it made me laugh. Like it was that, like, that, that's be... a super goofy. Like, if you were offended by it, that would be very weird. <laughs> yes, it would. Like, <laughs> it's not like this is like challenging me to make me think of things that I wasn't. <laughs> it's yeah. giving me thoughts I don't want. No, it's, it, and learning things about dicks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> such as how easy it is to cut them off. What is it this? Is a true. twine game? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I I, uh, I shot off a bunch of these uh, these eye dicks. <laughs> yep. Um, man, can you imagine one time like your 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 J and O? And mm-hmm. uh, when you feel like you're about to make uh, make Probo, uh, instead of that, just an eye, like it <laughs> turns into one of these things. <laughs> There's a so one of my favorite uh, one of my favorite blogs, uh, Liar Town. <laughs> they had this really upsetting image. It was uh, like sometimes they do like fake book covers or something like that. And so there's a th- there's a penis with a whole bunch of like lustrous brown hair coming out of the uh, coming out of the tip of it. <laughs> like uh like 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 somebody just ejaculated hair and the title of the book was unwanted thoughts <laughs> uh, <laughs> yep. yeah I, I don't care for that <laughs> not uh, one bit it was, it's a very effective piece of horror yeah i don't want anything to come out of there that's not expected i guess that's why like boy the man the the, the first person to come <laughs> like that had to have been a thing right like <laughs> Holy shit, G- Gary! Does come spring eternal? Are we are we doing this again? <laughs> yeah, so we're back. It's almost summertime, man. The boys are back in town. <laughs> yeah, I just I can't. Uh, just the first person is it? Did I already say that? Yeah. Spring? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, I don't know if you said it last year, but like you already said that during the session, okay. talking about being the first person to inject. Like, no, I was just saying, if I brought that up during your the tadpole stuff, <laughs> like that, just like I've never, I've never quite uh, found my peace with that idea, and I never I haven't exercised it from my head. Yep. The horror of the, 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 you know, when that first happened. But regardless of which, if it was an eyeball instead of uh, Probo, then that yeah. would be uh, a thousand times, especially if it caught. Like it became one of these things, and it just became like, oh, now I got an eye here. Yeah. Well, now time to go kill myself in the furnace in the basement because <laughs> yeah. my, I shouldn't be in my home alone furnace. Yes. Yeah. I'm, going, I'm going to go walk into yeah. fire. Yeah, and it's and, and it can only see in the ultraviolet spectrum. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Or it's only a, it's only awake when you're asleep. Oh God. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh. <sighs> Anywho, these these things, um, <laughs> the the Mordors and Mordors. You know, you know what? You know what I'll do. As, or, or, you know, I'm not I'm not throwing you a bone, but you know, if if we're gonna if Coons can be dog tags, these can be dicks. Okay, because that's a scarier idea. Yeah. So I'll, I'll I'll give it to you just because it's scarier. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know how scary. Like, it, like but, I don't. I don't well, like if they if they. I don't know that they are dicks. I'm saying like the character designer was having fun. If but it it's scary. I, it's not that they are dicks. It's scarier though if they became this way from the scenario we're describing, where you accidentally ejaculate a dick or an eye. Oh shit! Like, so, so, so it grows an eye, and then it just like yeah. it, like it detaches, and then yeah. walks around and forms a society. And it becomes like a Vertigo comic called "I Ejaculate with Eye Dash." <laughs> I ejaculate. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, so so I'll, I'll give it to you just because, again, there's not evidence for the Kuhn thing, but it's scarier and cooler. Yep. This, if, if I think of them as, as being soldiers who actually who were just, uh, you know, on shore leave, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, and, and then they accidentally, you know, grew this gigantic third eye mm-hmm. uh, out at the tip of their, the Drangus. Then yeah. I'm, I'm down. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then, then it got up and started walking around of its own volition, uh, talking about God. <laughs> yeah. 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 It, yep. just, it just disappeared. <laughs> like, it packed its bags and like, I'm out of here. Yeah, it's scary. They're scary and they're annoying. Like, they're <laughs> yeah. constantly talking about God to you. Like, just like, leave me alone. <laughs> Have you heard the good news? Yeah. Shut up, dick. <laughs> what? Uh, I haven't. There's nothing has been good news since an eyeball grew out of my dick. <laughs> yeah. There's no such thing as good news anymore. Everything sucks now. Yeah. Like, I literally, like, even if I'm watching a movie, I know you're there. <laughs> like, there's no such thing as good news anymore. You I, ruined fucking Captain America Civil War for me. <laughs> and now, like, I don't know how to clean you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I don't want to, like, I don't want to put Visine on they the They don't make dick Visine. Yeah. Ben Stein does not know how to fix this. I've called yeah. him. Oh, uh, <laughs> Yeah, that, that is, boy. That is a nightmare. I, I don't, uh, I hope that never happens to me. <laughs> Gary. <laughs> I think, I think that with enough donations, we can race, we can, we can race to find a cure. It just, uh, you, even a cure, like, it'd just be like, uh, donate enough money to where if that happens to me, somebody other than me will cut it off. <laughs> like, it just, we just need to find a guy behind Safeway who needs 75 bucks. That's the only amount of money we need to raise for this. And then I will bleed my way to the hospital and be a happy eunuch uh, who no longer has an all-seeing eye where there should have just been, you know, yeah. 20 CCs. Well, I mean, here's here's the thing. I think I could cut, like, $5 out of the Patreon tape to get you a little patch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, like a little Nick Fury. Yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> monocular fury <laughs> yep and nick furry yeah yeah there we go no um <laughs> anywho the 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 chalkstone area <laughs> this is uh as far as like layout and stuff goes there's not much to this it's uh, I, I, that's weird i thought it was really confusing like it's right, uh like, it's, it's a grid but yeah it's i mean i guess when i say as far as uh maybe layout wise not necessarily what i meant like it is complicated as far as kind of theme like visual theming wise mm-hmm there's not like we're we're back in tunnels. Yes, is really all I was trying to get to. Yeah, um, you know it is kind of confusingly laid out. Um, it opens to a couple of different like it has different entrances because we could have gone here right away. Yeah, as we mentioned, and uh, so that kind of adds to the confusion as well. Yeah. So the area that you can get in from either side is this uh, is this kind of like little maze of tunnels. And uh, what's kind of interesting about this is, you know, some of these some of these uh, Mordors will attack you, but other ones are just kind of chilling and you can talk to them. Um, <laughs> we, we alluded to the, the the annoyance of talking about God, but I love this line. Uh, but uh, a blue one uh, that you find behind a wall, it says long ago, God was here. Now he is not. Oh, God, where is there a God who will not disappear? That's super good. Yeah. Um, way, way more evocative than the other ones that just talk about their boss. Yep. Boss. Like, I didn't be, hear before I was crazy. <laughs> like, yeah, boss. Yeah. You, you had to, you had to go downstairs and beat strong boss. <laughs> like, boss. What, what are you? <laughs> like this, you, the, the, the tone of this diction is very, uh, mundane and weird. <laughs> um, the ones that don't attack you will give you things as well, which kind of nice. They're little treasure boxes usually. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, uh, you can you kind of make your way, uh, through this maze, um section uh kind of uh until eventually you get to this kind of lower area that has this uh this walkway that you can create a shortcut uh to that just allows you to bypass a lower area that's dangerous yes um you kind of push this uh this pillar to create this bridge down and allows you to walk over the the more the more doors yes and uh there's a choice you get to a place where there are three doors that you can open up um and uh Two of them will take you to an infuriating trial, uh, whereas the other one, if you if you take the center, will take you down into this prison. But all of them are kind of leading to this area where the boss actually is. Yes. And so, I did not choose the right one. I went through one of the infuriating trials. Yes. And this is this was egregious. I almost lost lost patience with it. Um, mm. because you go in and like, it's a big open chamber with a bunch of cells off to the side. Uh, there's a little bit you can do like with, uh, with the walkways over top, like you can get some, you know, you can get a Derringer, you can get some nice, like, uh, gear that some of which is cursed, but some of it's actually pretty good. But when mm-hmm. you go to make your way back out, the door is locked behind you 
all the doors mm. are locked and there's no indication of this, but you have to kill all the enemies that are here. Some mm. of which may be on a walkway that you can't actually access from the floor. So you have to hope they fall down. Mm. Yeah. I, I, I might've just locked out with yeah. that. Like I didn't end up having uh, I mean, I had the same thing leading up to the last part, mm. but uh, I just, uh, you know, most of them were dead at that point anyway, because I, I fought, you know, I tried to fight things thinking with my shadow tower, you know, kind of a, uh, Thinking that like oh I'm gonna want these levels yeah you know so I should so I should fight these things and just uh you know I got to the door it was locked and then went back and killed a guy on my way back to check a different door and then the door's open and it's like oh you passed the trial I was like I didn't even really know I was doing a trial <laughs> yep. um so it, this is very luck dependent yeah so I just ended up having to walk around in circles for 15 minutes mm. waiting for waiting for something to appear that's a bummer yeah. Um, once you once you eventually pass the trial, the, like a voice comes and says, "Powerful one, I hear your voice," <laughs> and uh, you can you can kind of move in uh, further in. Yes. So. Um, and so you get to uh, if if you decide to backtrack just a little bit, you get to this uh, the, this this prison um where you kind of get the sense that they're like doing a little bit of like it's it's like revolver ocelot um uh, interrogating them to persuade them to join the side. Mm-hmm. Like you know they're like a lot of them are talking about like oh I can't. I can't hear, boss. Uh, Big like, boss? You know, <laughs> but boss. Is that, is, that, is that what's going on? Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. you know, answer, yeah. answer. Um, uh-huh. But there is uh, uh, th- there is this encounter in this big circular chamber with uh, with the boss of this area, the Quiddle Mordor, uh, which yes. is a pretty cool fight. Like this is uh, like this is the first boss fight of the game, really. Yeah, yeah, and essentially, it's this, this big kind of uh, lion thing with with tusks. And uh, this huge, huge mane, it's this, this big fur ball, and it kind of charges you around and, uh, you know, shoots fireballs at you. Um, and the cool thing is, is it introduces something that they end up using a lot in Souls games. And there's a little bit of this in Shadow Tower, too, but mm-hmm. um, the arena is really important here. Yeah. Because if you were just in a big square room, like, you could never fight this guy. Right. Um, but you need to take advantage of his, like, his him being fast on straightaways, but slower on turning. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because he can outrun you. But if you kind of kite him around this gigantic pillar in the middle of the room, he will stay at a distance where you can comfortably dodge and shoot him. Yeah. Um, I didn't fight him with melee weapons. Um, I imagine that's much harder. Yeah, so, I can't imagine maneuvering uh, because yeah. he moves so much faster than you can. And like a lot of the bosses in this game are kind of obviated by the presence of guns. Yes. Yeah. I ended up using guns for all the bosses. Yeah. Um, which, uh, again, like, it's cool that there are guns in the game, um, but some of the stuff doesn't feel... I wonder if they came, like, not late, but if it was always part of the plan. I don't know. To have guns. Because the uh, they do really make... They trivialize a lot of the game. Yeah. Um, they're they're very powerful. It's like the the opening cinematic to Arcadum. <laughs> like, constantly. Um, but eventually, you, you kill this guy. Um, and he gives you the amber lift key, which allows you to leave. Um, that prison that uh, we mentioned, um, if you're playing along or, or going to play this game, go down there and get all the treasure down there. Oh, yeah. Because there's tons of shit. It's a it's a real treasure trove. Um, but you make your way back, uh, and when you leave, um, in a really cool little moment, Ariel is standing there um, <laughs> waiting for you. Like, she knows when you get the key, and this happens time and time again. It's pretty rad. Yeah. And uh, she asks you for a favor. She talks about somebody up ahead who maybe, uh, uh, you know, has uh, stolen something from her and she wants you uh, to get it back. And she doesn't care if you kill him. Yes. And uh, we're going to do her that favor because we run into kind of a proto patches. Yeah. Which I think is, is pretty rad. Again, just like things that uh, that show up early. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So we've been going for about an hour and a half. Gary, do we want to uh, break it here? Yeah, we can probably break it here. We'll be able to move through the next area a little bit. There are more areas, but we'll move through it quicker, I think. Yeah. And if that episode's a little bit longer, who cares? Like, we're not uh, trying to <laughs> balance a scale. No. <laughs> um, so It'll be fun. Yeah, so thanks for, thanks for listening. We'll be back next week with the rest of Shadow Tower Abyss. Um, in the meantime, this is not too late. If this sounds interesting to you, download it and play it because it is really cool. Yeah. And, um, you know, because it is so story slight, like just explore these places and like look at the cool stuff. And and get into the fights, yeah. which are which are fun fights. Um, yeah. So we're going to be doing that next episode. After that, we have uh, your responses. We're recording these all at once. There's not time for your responses, but we read everything you send in. So even if it doesn't end up on the air, we may use it for a slow news day yeah. in the future. Uh, and then after that, we're playing a little game 
called Slashy Souls. Yeah, yeah. we're doing uh, so we're we're, do, we're doing a, a four part series on Slashy Souls. Gary, yep. I've been I've put about fifteen hours into this. Yep, um, uh, I'm on, I'm on hour thirty. Um, I, I put down everything to just kind of get through and get the true ending. Yep, of, uh, of Slashy Souls, and uh, there's a lot of lore, and uh, there's a lot of. Did, did you expect Aldia and Solaire to hook up? I I did not expect them to hook up, and I really didn't expect them to show it. Right. Like and it's that much so detail. weird because like I understand that like branches are like dicks for trees, but I didn't really see it come alive until yeah. until this. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of sap. Yeah, little full, yeah. lot of sap. People ask us about slashy souls. Uh, yeah. I don't even know what, we, what to say about slashy souls. It's a it's, um, a, it's a trifle. Let's, let, let's talk about it real briefly during the extra episode for this, since we'll have a little <laughs> extra time. Yeah. Well, well, let's let's do our tight five on slashy souls then. <laughs> um, but anyway, so we're not doing Slash Souls, we're doing Dark Souls 3. Yes, uh, we're going to do our first impressions, and then, like, we're going to get into it. Like, yeah. we're just full full bore. Um, yeah. Yeah, this, uh, this uh, our, our, our national nightmare of talking about stuff other than Souls will soon be over. Yeah, go, going go just uh, Tim Allen style, full Borland. <laughs> the, um, so, uh, looking forward to that. If you like the show and want to uh, get episodes a day early, um, get a bunch of other different benefits, or just support us because it mm-hmm. feels good to support people who you like, um, you can go to patreon.com forward slash TV. Yes. And uh, each and every one of you who already does that, we really appreciate it. If you uh, would like to and can't, we totally understand. Mm-hmm. If you just kind of don't want to, that's also okay. Yeah, thank um, you for listening. Yeah, but if you're able to, that's awesome. Yeah, it makes so. uh, it makes a big difference. Like if everybody gave even one dollar, it would uh, it would change our lives to where we wouldn't have to work. Um, yeah. on stuff that wasn't this network, we could do yeah. more shows. Like we have stuff in the hopper, and the only limit is time. And time, yes. as we know, is money. Yes. So it is a it is a gradient from A plus to A minus. <laughs> so the uh, and be on that A plus side. Mm-hmm. Um, so we really we really really do appreciate that. Um, you can also rate and review the show on iTunes. Um, it's been a little while since we had one of those. Yeah. Um, those are uh, appreciated and help yeah. more people hear about it. Um, you can I, also blog it and Twitter it and the like. That is especially important as we lead up to, uh, to yes. Dark Souls three. Um, your ratings, your reviews. Like I want to be on the front page. I yeah, want it, to I want to be like in whatever list like when you go and look at like the the assembled list of video game podcasts like I want to be there in enthusiast voices like alongside like retronauts and stuff yeah. and a uh, game release has historically been like the time when we reach a new plateau you know the time mm-hmm. when we rise up and Dark Souls 3 is going to be huge for us but it could be even huger if you give us your help um, and that and that support. Yeah, and and that's with rating and reviews, but also with other people talking about it. Like everyone's going to be talking about this game. Um, you know, we don't like unlike other podcasts where there's kind of this like, oh, well, every you know every podcast is going to talk about Dark Souls three for an episode, mm-hmm. you know, or two episodes. But uh, we need uh, people to who dig it to to kind of and who who want a little bit more than that to help kind of sustain us and and get that word out. Yeah, because uh, after you know you get your your giant bombs and and your like of just kind of like the quick look and 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 talking about it for for a little bit while in generality is like, you know we we, we can go a little we can go a little deeper than that. Yeah, so uh, let's uh, let's do that and and uh, we uh, hopefully you don't forget us when they all forget about Dark Souls three. Yeah, don't forget us. Don't forget if you need us. Um, <laughs> if you need us, we'll be here. You know. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah, I think that's probably about it. Uh, I think so. Uh, if you have not yet pre-ordered or purchased Dark Souls 3 or its guide, consider using uh, the the Amazon link at duckfeed.tv slash tip jar. Uh, mm-hmm. That goes a long way. You don't pay anything extra uh, for that, and we get a small cut. Uh, it is an affiliate-type program, um, and I've already seen a lot of people doing that. And if you're li- when you're listening to this when it comes out, um, Duck Spring is still going on. Yeah, you still have so a couple you- of hours to hop in on that. Yeah, so go over to uh, www.twitch.tv forward slash DuckSpring and, uh, and watch some streamers do some cool shit and donate to a fantastic charity. Yes. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think that's about it. I think that's all. Um, so until next time, Gary. Uh, uh, squeeze the shaft. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Big bucks, no eyes. <laughs> And we all pray that we will have far more soon. I want to look at down at it. I don't want it like looking <laughs> down at me. Like I'm not looking for the man in the mirror when it comes to the solo bolos. Like <laughs> yeah. that's a, that, that is not a flattering angle on your face anyway. No, no, it's like the opposite MySpace angle. <laughs> Boy, yeah, man, if somebody ever put like a camera in your dick, every single time you <laughs> yeah. JO'd, like it would, you would look the worst. Uh-huh. Like, can you imagine the most handsome person, like Tom Hardy doing that wouldn't look good? No.
Like nobody would look good. Yeah, it wow. is. It, it is. It is the most unflattering angle. Yeah. yeah poor guys. Yeah. That's that. that that's what. Uh, that, that that that's what somebody doing you a favor has to see every time they look up. Uh, boy. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's a sad sight. It makes you think. <laughs> that might have been post roll. I don't know if I want that to be. <laughs> um, 